Now, the rest of the story. The designing and building of experimental aircraft is a thriving sport hobby. Men and boys and girls, largely under the direction of the Experimental Aircraft Association of Oshkosh, Wisconsin, are building airplanes in barns and garages and backyards across the United States at this moment. More than 14,000 of them. From some of these experimental designs may come commercial innovations. But of all the do-it-yourself Americans who have ever home-built an airplane, and for all of those who ever will, I want you to meet one. And if the name Gustav Whitehead means nothing to you, he probably wouldn't mind. But I kind of do. There's no evidence that he ever sought or wanted public attention. He was born and reared in Bavaria. Gus was intrigued by the challenge of flight since his earliest boyhood. In fact, he sought to make bird-like designs of paper. And he toyed with tissue paper parachutes. When he was 13, Gus made wings of bamboo and fabric. He fitted them to his arms and he jumped off his grandfather's barn. Schoolmates laughed. They nicknamed Gus Flyer, not flatteringly. Gustav Whitehead came to the United States when he was 18. And after eight years of odd jobs, he set up a machine shop in Bridgeport, Connecticut. He made internal combustion engines. Soon had more orders for motor boat engines than he could possibly fill, but he used all of his boat profits to pay for his experiments with airplanes. Gus home built one airplane. It was a curious appearing thing, 30 feet long, bat-like wings, rested on four bicycle wheels. It was of spruce and pine and bamboo and wire and silk and powered by a two-cycle, four-cylinder engine turning two wooden propellers. And one day, Gus decided it was time for him to fly his improvised machine. Friends helped him move the contraption to an open beach off Long Island Sound in Bridgeport. On his first takeoff, he did fly the plane for half a mile. Then when a gust of wind threatened his control, he cut the throttle. He settled back to the beach. But he tried again. This next time, he flew a mile and a half. This time, he was 200 feet off the ground. That's almost a city block up in the air. His elated friends congratulated him. Gus Whitehead was so thrilled that he immediately began building a more sophisticated plane with a more powerful engine. This time he would replace the wooden framework with metal. Well, by the following January, Gus flew his improved plane seven miles over Long Island Sound. That flight, that seven-mile flight over Long Island, was as close to success, as close to fame, as Gus Whitehead would ever get. Because he had used up his own money and the money of some other people, and they were not interested in pursuing his hobby any further. Now his health began to fail and his airplane experiments began to falter. And when Gus Whitehead died at 53, he left a mortgaged house and $8 in cash. And that's really all there is to this, this one-man personal conquest of the sky, except to add that when Gustav Whitehead made his first flights off Long Island Sound, that sweltering August day, in the year 1901, that was two years and four months and three days before the Wright brothers. Now you know the rest of the story.